Welcome back to Stem Cells from the Sofa. This is a virtual um, seminar series hosted by the Stem Cell Network that's uh, designed to reconnect researchers and bring expert content to you from uh, the comfort of your sofa. Um, today, I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Bernard Thabot, who's making exciting progress in the translation of his research into the clinic. And so you'll hear more about that soon. Just uh, very briefly, um, I'm sure you're all aware that uh, the talks will be followed by a live Q&A session. So really access to the Q&A button is all I want to inform you about here. Um, you can press that Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen and it will bring up a, a window. And you should ask questions using that box at any point during the, the webinar. And um, we'll save those questions for the end of the webinar and uh, we'll, I'll, I'll put them to Bernard right at the end there. So it's um, with very great pleasure that I introduce Bernard Thibault. Um, Bernard is a clinician scientist recruited to Ottawa from Edmonton in 2012. Um, he uh, is a senior scientist with the Ottawa, Research, uh, Ottawa Hospital Research Institute and a neonatologist with the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, where he provides care to critically ill newborns. He is also a professor of pediatrics at the University of Ottawa. Uh, Dr. Thibault obtained his MD at the, par at the U University Louis Pasteur in Strasbourg, France in 1991 and trained in pediatrics and neonatology at the University of Paris 5 in Paris, France, where he obtained his MSc and PhD before completing a two-year postdoc at the University of Alberta. Bernard studies the mechanisms of lung development, injury and repair in order to design new treatments for incurable lung diseases. His focus is on answering clinically relevant questions for translation into real life applications. Over the next five years, his goal is to bring safe and effective cell and gene therapies for lung diseases into the clinic to improve patient outcomes. Um, Bernard's extensive contributions to the field are recognized by uh, participation on numerous peer review committees and, um, and scientific advisory boards at the international and national and provincial level, including the NIH and CIHR. He holds the University of Ottawa Partnership Research Chair in Regenerative Medicine, and his research is funded by CIHR, um, the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada, Stem Cell Network, and the um, Ontario Institute of Regenerative Medicine. Bernard, please uh, take it away. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, John, um, uh, for the nice uh, introduction. And uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, the audience for linking in and uh, giving me the opportunity to tell you about um, our efforts to translate cell therapies um, into patients. And in our case, patients are critically ill um, babies with lung diseases and um, other um, issues. Um, this is the um, outline of um, uh, the presentation. Interesting. There we go. Um, and uh, it shows the classical roadmap uh, uh, of the translation of uh, promising therapies into the clinic that starts with um, uh, in the lab with uh, preclinical studies, uh, discovery, um, small rodent um, exploratory studies, ideally leading to the confirmatory studies in larger animal models. And then um, uh, this leads then uh, to the classical phases of a clinical trial with phase one safety feasibility onto the other phases to show um, efficacy uh, of uh, uh, these medications and further um, uh, safety. And um, this is usually a long process uh, that takes uh, 10 to 20 years and is often uh, accompanied by um, failures. And uh, this talk today will be about uh, how we can mitigate uh, and increase uh, the efficacy of translating cell therapy into the clinic in the vulnerable patient population. And uh, we call this uh, the incubator concept, um, uh, which is a multifaceted approach um, to um, increase the efficacy, but also the speed of uh, clinical translation of uh, mesenchymal stromal cell therapy into um, uh, babies. 
And so the relevance is uh, that the extreme prematurity uh, is now the first uh, killer in uh, children below the age of five years. And uh, there are many complications of extreme uh, prematurity for which there are no treatments. And the one that we will be talking about today is the chronic lung disease of uh, prematurity called uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia or BPD. It's a multifactorial disease and the challenge of uh, BPD is illustrated here uh, in this slide that shows the histological sequence of lung development, which starts in utero before birth and um, all the way then to um, postnatal after birth when uh, the lung um, extends its um, surface area uh, exponentially during the alveolar phase and um, uh, to ensure um, proper breathing. And uh, you can see that uh, when um, BPD was described for the first time, uh, babies were born around 34 weeks gestation, uh, but with improvements in neonatology, we have pushed back the limits of viability. And when we talk about extreme prematurity, we talk about babies born around 24 weeks gestation. So you can see that these babies are now at a canalicular saccular stage of lung development, so very early on. And um, uh, the um, uh, lung uh, developmental process is already interrupted before birth in these babies because of chorioamunitis or preeclampsia, uh, which is inflammation or high blood pressure in um, uh, pregnant women. Uh, that uh, impede normal lung growth. And then at birth, um, oxygen and positive pressure ventilation, or PPV, which is uh, meant to maintain these babies alive, at the same time cause some lung damage. And postnatally as well, these babies are at risk of developing sepsis. Uh, they are given postnatal steroids to attenuate the inflammation, but at the same time, these steroids further uh, decrease um, lung growth. And so um, these babies are clearly between the rock and the hard place and um, uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia uh, is a multifactorial disease that stops lung development. And um, because it stops lung development, the consequences of BPD can be lifelong as shown on this um, CT scan uh, that shows uh, an emphysematous, like a smoker lung type of uh, disease in uh, uh, young adults that, that were born preterm and had BPD, suggesting that there are lifelong consequences of uh, extreme preterm birth with consequences on the lung, but also on brain development as we will uh, see uh, later on. And so currently there is no treatment uh, for these um, babies. Um, mesenchymal stromal cells uh, have advanced to the front runner of uh, cell therapy, even though um, there are uh, some um, uh, controversies around the repair potential of these um, um, cells. Uh, bone marrow derived uh, mesenchymal stromal cells uh, have advanced uh, to the uh, leader of uh, cell therapy. Uh, and um, they, there are numerous clinical trials that are testing uh, their safety and efficacy in a variety uh, of um, uh, diseases, which is a, a problem. And uh, this slide here shows um, the excitement over time uh, for these cells in uh, showing the exponential increase in publication uh, with regards to um, MSCs. And you can see that uh, the definition uh, set out by the ISCT uh, for these cells is still um, relatively rudimentary because it includes plastic adherence, multipotency, meaning these cells can become uh, bone cartilage or fat, and uh, they uh, express certain uh, surface markers and are negative for other cell surface markers. And of course, this kind of rudimentary um, definition has led to the controversy uh, in the field um, as expressed by uh, Doug Sipp in a recent um, editorial in Science uh, 
um, suggesting that um, still much more needs to be learned about these um, amazing chymostromal cells. And uh, we will talk about this at the very end of my talk and hopefully have some interesting discussions around that. But uh, the, the promise of uh, these cells um, has not been left um, um, unexplored by a neonatologist in the field. And um, this slide here shows the proof of principle experiment uh, for the repair potential of MSC in uh, neonatal lung injury. Uh, the classical model that is being used is neonatal rodents exposed to high oxygen. And you can see in um, compared to control room air house animals uh, that you have a dramatic arrest in alveolar development mimicking BPD, but also a dramatic decrease in lung angiogenesis with much fewer blood vessels, um, further compromising um, lung growth and gas exchange. And in this model, uh, you can um, test uh, the um, therapeutic potential of mesenchymal stromal cells either as a prevention strategy or as a rescue strategy when given um, before or after uh, the exposure to um, high oxygen. And um, here in the slide you can see uh, the dramatic arrest in lung development um, with um, hyperoxia. And uh, amazing chymal stromal cells given straight into the trachea uh, to the lungs through the airways uh, were able to prevent uh, the arrest in alveolar development. And uh, this was in neonatal rats. And another group um, used intravenous delivery of uh, bone marrow derived MSCs uh, to show similar improvement in lung structure, but also an attenuation of inflammatory lung cell influx, macrophages and neutrophils in the lung of uh, animals that were treated with bone marrow derived MACs, suggesting um, that one of their mechanism of action is through attenuation of uh, inflammation. Of course, for neonatologists, a uh, clinically relevant source of uh, mesenchymal stromal cells is the umbilical cord. It's extremely rich in, in, in MACs. And uh, with 100 million births uh, worldwide, it's a large source of uh, so far untapped uh, mesenchymal stromal cells. Furthermore, its collection is painless and safe after birth. There are no ethical dilemmas. But more interestingly, these cells may have um, a superior repair capacity than their adult bone marrow counterparts. And so here, this slide shows uh, similar experiments, this time with human umbilical cord derived mesenchymal stromal cells injected intratracheally into um, these neonatal rats. You can see again the dramatic arrest in alveolar development, no effect of human uh, dermal neonatal fibroblast as a control cell, and a very nice uh, prevention uh, or rescue. Uh, with uh, mesenchymal uh, stromal cells from these uh, umbilical, cord, uh, umbilical cords. More importantly, long term, uh, there were no adverse effects, no tumor formation of these um, cells in these uh, rats uh, that are now six months old, which is the equivalence of uh, 30 to 40 years in human uh, um, uh, age. And you can see that the, the um, dramatic arrest in alveolar development persists into adult age in this model, but so does the therapeutic benefit of these mesenchymal stromal cells without any tumor formation. Equally important is that in control animals, room air uh, control animals, MSCs had no adverse effects. Uh, we also um, implemented or tested the therapeutic potential for other uh, complications of uh, prematurity, such as an E. coli sepsis model in neonatal uh, rats, or a brain injury model, uh, in which we showed that uh, umbilical cord derived MSCs were able to improve survival and to protect uh, neuroprogenitor cells, uh, increasing the excitement for the use of uh, these cells in the neonatal population. 
However, as I hinted to in the introduction, um, clinical translation is unacceptably slow, but often fails. And um, here are the stats. Uh, you can uh, read this, um, um, this, this paper uh, that um, provides you with an overview of what the challenges are in the clinical um, uh, translation. And this is where the incubator approach uh, comes in. Uh, where we teamed up at the OHRI uh, Method Center with a multidisciplinary team to try and mitigate uh, the risk of translating MSC therapy into babies. And here I would like to acknowledge uh, the many contributors to this incubator concept. And as you can see, uh, they have um, uh, complementary qualifications, a health psychologist, a health economist, um, and uh, clinical epidemiologists that contributed um, to um, this work. And here I will just show you three um, um, pieces of um, uh, collaboration uh, that has led to HELP1, uh, the first phase one uh, clinical trial of uh, core-derived MSCs for BPD. Um, uh, here we uh, performed a systematic review of all preclinical studies uh, that had been done with MSCs in neonatal lung injury. And systematic reviews have been used extensively in the clinical literature, but have never been used in the neonatal preclinical literature. Yet, it is um, the most robust um, way of um, providing us with uh, the necessary um, knowledge gaps uh, per, that persist in the literature um, to um, uh, move forward and optimize the clinical translation. And so here Sajid uh, screens through 990 um, um, publications, uh, only 25 were selected uh, for the um, systematic reviews because they had, uh, they fulfilled all the inclusion criteria. And here you can see a classic forest plot uh, that uh, shows uh, the results of uh, mesenchymal stromal cells on lung structure. And as you can see here, uh, at the um, conclusion of the systematic review, uh, mesenchymal stromal cells seem to um, favor improve the lung structure in uh, all these 25 um, studies except in uh, three studies where the cells were given intranasally and uh, probably did not reach uh, the, the lung. However, when we then uh, perform a risk of bias analysis, uh, you, can show, you can see that um, uh, it paints a slightly different um, picture of the very promising results of the MSCs. Uh, in that there were a lot of limitations in all of these uh, preclinical studies uh, with uh, high risk of bias, um, mostly in terms of uh, randomization, um, but also of um, uh, reporting uh, the, the outcomes. And this is now a phenomenon that is widely recognized uh, um, by editors and um, uh, also, um, some of our um, members at the OHRI have contributed to um, making the ARRIVE guidelines uh, to enhance the rigor uh, of uh, uh, preclinical um, studies, um, trying to mirror uh, the um, rigor that is um, implemented for clinical trials. And hopefully, this will lead. Uh, to a more robust, higher evidence-based um, um, papers uh, on which then clinical trials will be, will be based. Um, another interesting aspect of these systematic reviews was that only um, uh, studies, that studies were only performed in the neonatal rodent model. Uh, there have been no large animal models so far that has, have tested mesenchymal stromal cells um, in a neonatal model of lung injury uh, in larger animals. And here we had the unique um, opportunity to work with a non-human primate model that exists only in one uh, uh, place on Earth, uh, in San Antonio, Texas, 
where you can um, deliver um, preterm baboons at the equivalence of 40, 24 weeks in humans. Um, um, instrument them with an endotracheal tube with catheters the same way we do it in the NICU and then inject human umbilical cord MSCs intravenously and uh, then we could um, uh, monitor these, uh, pay, uh, these uh, baboons for two weeks. And here this is a very nice model uh, to provide feasibility, safety and efficacy of MSCs and uh, to provide these data to regulatory agencies. So in the first hours, uh, as I said, we could uh, place lines, administer the cells, and uh, monitor for infusional toxicity. And these animals are ventilated for two weeks uh, straight, exactly like we would do in the um, human NICU. And then at the end of this two-week ventilation period, we had the opportunity to analyze, of course, uh, the lung structure and other tissues. And here we came across a very interesting, so far non-reported effect of MSCs. Um, these uh, um, preterm baboons um, all showed um, hemodynamic instability, uh, low blood pressure requiring medication, uh, whereas those baboons that were treated with mesenchymal stromal cells had a much more uh, favorable um, evolution and only one animal required a bolus of normal saline, but none of them required any medication uh, to maintain uh, the blood pressure. Uh, then uh, we performed uh, extensive lung stereology, where unfortunately we could not see uh, a, a therapeutic benefit of these amazing chymostromal cells compared to placebo-treated uh, animals. And finally, uh, we could show using forensic methods uh, that uh, mesenchymal stromal cells would not um, engraft in the lung, as we, as we have known before, but here we show it in this baboon model, um, suggesting that these uh, mesenchymal stromal cells exert the effect through alternate um, mechanism, but it also increases um, markers or arguments for the safety of these um, cells. Uh, finally, the last piece of our incubator um, uh, concept uh, was a knowledge uh, translation um, uh, piece of work because we know that patient enrollment is a major factor of failure of clinical trials. So here we performed um, uh, semi-quantitative interviews with parents but also with neonatal colleagues to see what could be obstacles or facilitators of a clinical trial of MSC and BPD. So we interviewed um, parents uh, that had um, uh, babies in the NICU uh, between 22 and 28 weeks uh, gestation. And we also interviewed 16 neonatologists uh, um, across the country uh, to see how they felt about an MSC trial in preterm babies. And so um, these um, semi-quantitative interviews allowed us to identify potential obstacles and um, strategies to solve these uh, potential obstacles, to overcome them. And one of the very interesting approaches that we are now uh, taking is the development of an animated informational video for parents that um, can address some of their concerns about what is, this, what is a phase one trial what are mesenchymal stromal cells and what are potential side effects. And we will test uh, this uh, animated information video in our observational um, study uh, that will um, uh, come before our actual interventional study in uh, HALT1, which is the phase one trial. And here again, we have a large team of uh, clinical trialists um, uh, research coordinators and um, uh, GMP facility members uh, that are necessary to pull off uh, such a trial. And so here just two slides about this uh, trial. Uh, we will have an observational cohort uh, that um, has the same inclusion criteria uh, than our, our interventional study, gestational age less than 28 weeks, still intubated and mechanically ventilated with high oxygen requirements. 
And in these um, patients, uh, we will um, measure some inflammatory uh, markers in the blood and the tracheal aspirate. And we will evaluate this informational video uh, for parents. Uh, these, none of these patients will receive uh, any cells. And the rationale for performing uh, such an observational study is to serve as a run-in phase for the investigative team and data safety monitoring board to see where our, uh, to work out the kinks before we go into our interventional cohort, uh, which will then include the same patient population. They will be eligible if they are between day seven and 21 of age. And then we will have um, a, um, a dose escalation uh, trial where the first three patients will receive 1 million cells per kilo. Uh, if everything goes well, uh, we can go to the mid dose of 3 million cells per kilo. And if everything is okay, we can go to the 10 million cells per kilo in the other in the next three patients. And this will allow us to identify the maximum feasible dose for a phase um, two trial. And the endpoints are first safety only, uh, seen here on the left of the slides. And then we have uh, secondary endpoints uh, with some indicators of um, efficacy but, um, and, and feasibility as well as uh, monitoring the pro-inflammatory cytokines and testing again our animated information um, video. So in summary, um, I hope that um, I could convince you that um, between those preclinical studies and the clinical trials, the classical pathway to move uh, from the bench to the bedside, the incubator concept uh, can enhance the, um, uh, the um, efficacy and the speed of uh, clinical translation and uh, increase the success of uh, implementation of MSC therapy into the clinic. What we haven't discussed is the cell product uh, development, um, which is a presentation um, in itself. Uh, because uh, there are many ways of uh, preparing these cells and anything you do to these cells before injecting them into our patients will affect uh, their um, uh, therapeutic uh, potential. And as well, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the definition of these um, cells is still controversial and uh, we're developing a Delphi method approach uh, to provide a some kind of evidence-based approach uh, to reach a consensus and uh, also uh, to uh, establish some re clinical reporting guidelines that will enhance the rigor of these um, uh, clinical trials. With this, I would like to thank all the people in the lab that have contributed to um, uh, this uh, research and the clinical translation. And as you can see, we will not stop at the, the implementation of mesenchymal stromal cells, but we are already working on uh, endothelial progenitor cells and also uh, a very interesting gene therapy uh, to cure other lung diseases in uh, newborns. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, thank you so much. That was a really great talk. Really interesting. Um, so we've got a few questions here coming in. So um, do take the time, audience, to, to type in your question and uh, I'll read it to Bernard and he can answer it. So um, we have one from Kelly who says, a terrific talk, thanks very much. Uh, there is evidence mm -hmm. to su suggest a pre uh, perinatal influx of innate immune cells, um, ILCs, is it eosinophils, et cetera, is important for lung remodeling and development. Have you had an opportunity to look at this in BPD on whether MSCs, which are thought to help to recruit these cells, restore downstream immune cell influx and remodeling? Okay, so thank you for this uh, question. Um, uh, this is uh, very interesting. Um, eosinophils have not been well um, uh, studied um, in neonatal lung development, and we're really uh, a little bit behind um, understanding 
uh, inflammation uh, in the perinatal lung. Uh, however, what we know is that uh, mesenchymal stromal cells seem to modulate uh, inflammatory cells and the um, most um, studied um, inflammatory cells so far has been, have been macrophages. And in BPD, uh, it has been suggested or shown that the mesenchymal stromal cells modulate these macrophages and uh, seem to um, uh, um, move these macrophages from a um, pro-inflammatory more to a repair um, phenotype, so M1, M2 phenotype. Um, of course, this is still like very rudimentary, um, but um, different groups have suggested that um, there is the switch from an M2 to an M2 uh, macrophage. Um, I'm not um, aware of uh, studies that had looked at the effect of MACs on eosinophils in the in the neonatal lung. Okay, thank you. So we we have another uh, question here. In preclinical studies, have you seen a, a chemoattractant action on MSCs uh, of MSCs on other cells? Um, we have not uh, looked at this. Um, I don't think that um, other groups have uh, looked at uh, the effect uh, of uh, chemoattractant. Um, what has been shown is that these uh, mesenchymal stromal cells seem to uh, modulate uh, fibrosis as well, and they seem to be pro-angiogenic, uh, which uh, are all um, factors that can improve, uh, attenuate the lung injury, but also promote lung repair and lung growth. This is what makes these cells so exciting for, uh, for BPD. But you can see through all these questions that there is still much more to be learned about the mechanism of action of these cells in the developing lung. So a slightly connected question to that, which is uh, the retention of the cells when they're, when they're um, supplied to the, to the patient. What strategies are you using to, to make sure that the cells are retained for as long as possible so that they can mediate their activity? Yes. So what we have done initially, we um, injected the cells straight into the lung because we thought that this would enhance their uh, time in, in, in the lung. And um, this was still at a time when we thought that these cells would actually engraft. Um, in the uh, neonatal rodent lung, it seems that a single injection is sufficient, even if the cells um, are rapidly eliminated within 40 hours to four days. Um, and uh, so we didn't have to uh, find strategies to enhance the um, residence of the mesenchymal stromal cells in the lung. However, we can see from our uh, baboon data uh, that a single injection right after birth is not enough to improve the lung structure. And similarly, I think in the clinical setting, we will likely need to um, uh, increase the number of uh, administration, um, whether it's administration every week or more frequently, uh, time will tell, clinical trials will tell. Um, and um, other groups have tried to enhance the residence of the cells by um, injecting them with um, um, cocoons um, so that they would be uh, degraded slower. And uh, this has uh, shown some uh, therapeutic benefit in other um, um, models of, of disease. Okay. So, um... I guess another question would be, um, what about the, how do you maintain once the, the cells have been restored? I mean, presumably if you're developing cells for a trial, you're going to have to have a bank of, of cells which are prepared. How do you maintain and ensure that they have these uh, the quality, you know, the activity and the, the characteristics that you think are, are, are you, you've previously characterized as being beneficial? 
Exactly. So this is a big, big challenge uh, of um, cell therapy or an MSC therapy specifically. Currently, uh, we don't have um, a um, good potency assay uh, for these cells that in vivo could predict in vitro would predict in vivo um, bioactivity. And so this is one of the biggest challenge right now in, in mesenchymal stromal cell therapy. And uh, various groups are trying to work on um, uh, various assays and hopefully new technologies will come along that will allow to better define uh, mesenchymal stromal cells and maybe identify the easiest would be a cell surface marker that uh, provides a clear distinction for a superior repair cell. That would be the holy grail. Um, and um, so we're working on these uh, kind of um, strategies, um, but it's, it's too early um, uh, to say whether uh, we have, uh, we have a, a, a good marker. Um, the, um, the umbilical cord um, provides a large uh, source of uh, mesenchymal stromal cells uh, within um, um, uh, uh, a week uh, or two weeks. We can have uh, up to uh, one billion cells, uh, which allows us to, from one cord, to actually do a full, complete, um, phase one or even maybe a phase two trial because our patients are uh, don't weigh that much 500 grams 800 grams and so um, uh, so we can do one trial with one single cord this decreases a little bit the var variability from donor to donor um, but um, the challenge of this potency assay persists yeah okay so there's one final question here um what is the contribution of the mother's mother's diseases to randomization bias and uh, they, they put in brackets inflammatory diseases versus not inflammatory oh this is an excellent question um so um uh, so it depends how i understand that this this question so um we assume uh, that the mesenchymal stromal cells their main mechanism of action and benefit would be through modulating the inflammation so I do think that um, in um, pregnancies where there is an inflammatory component uh, that early on affects already the lung, uh, this is where the cells probably would be at their best. And um, so we're at the very early stages uh, of clinical trials and uh, we will have to hopefully, if we show that there's some efficacy uh, we will have to narrow down then the, the optimal patient population uh, for which these cells um, have the superior benefit. And it could be actually uh, the population that have a um, inflammatory um, uh, history to it uh, more than preeclampsia, for example. But here again, only the clinical trials will provide us with this uh, answer. Fair enough. Well, Thank you so much, Bernard, uh, and on behalf of the audience, um, great talk, really informative. You look, sounds like you're making real progress as well, and it, you know you've uh, got something going on there that I think is um, really important. So thanks a lot. And yeah, uh, just thank sorry, go on, Bernard. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, uh, thanks for the invitation, and uh, thank you for the great um, uh, questions from the audience and. Uh, I look forward to uh, report more about our clinical trial when we get there. Thank you. Okay, before Thanks. everybody leaves, I'm just gonna tell you about the upcoming um, stem cells from the sofas. Um, so next week, actually on Wednesday of next week, we have uh, Dr. Bartha Nopis. She's a full professor at the Faculty of Medicine and director of the Center of Genomics and Policy at McGill University. Dr. Noffers is an internationally renowned expert in the ethical, legal, and social uh, implications of um, stem cell and regenerative medicine. And she will, be, uh, she will be discussing the ethics surrounding the creation of so-called CRISPR babies, including the um, existing legal and regulatory approaches. In addition, um, in particular, those of human rights, as well as the novel issues raised by clinical and germline editing. Uh, in two weeks' time, um, this is for all of you people who are currently 
um, living the life of working remotely. Um, we have um, a, a, a speaker, um, Anil Delwari, who's the managing director of Save It Like Sully. Yeah, Anil is a professional presentation trainer and coach who will provide guidance on effective distance communications for science professionals. So um, now that it's a norm for us all to be working from home, more or less, um, effective communication on platforms like Zoom or, or um, Microsoft Teams, more important than ever. So please uh, do register and, and level up your communi communication skill set. So as always, the stem cells from the SOFA talks are posted on SCN's YouTube channel, and you can get updates from SCN's um, Twitter account and from the SCN website as well. And, and uh, it was great to have you join us for this uh, stem cells from the SOFA. Thank you. Bye-bye.